In this problem, we are comparing two possible methods for finding the speed of a car despite a resistance from the wind and despite contributions to the speed that that might have. Method 1 is described as the average of d, the distance, divided by the first time, and d divided by t sub 2, the second time. So that will look like this. And method 2 is described to us as dividing d, the distance, by the average of the two times. So that will look like this. Our goal here is to decide which one of these formulas is more sound for finding the speed of the car despite the wind. Now even if you think you already know the answer, because the problem is asking us about this, let's try and rigorously prove which formula is going to be the better method to use. So what we can do is take this situation, outline what's happening, and try to derive our own equation from scratch and see which one of these methods lines up more closely with it. So here is a rough sketch of the car in both situations. And remember that on one trip, the car is going to be traveling in one direction. So I'm going to say that VC points in one way. And in the other picture, VC points in the opposite direction because that's when the car is coming back. And let's assume that in both cases, the wind is constant and points in the same direction. This means that in one case, the speed of the wind is pointing along with the speed of the car in the same direction, and in the other case, it is pointing in the opposite direction, fighting back against the car's speed. We can use these contributions in both cases to find some formulas for the total or effective speed of the car in each case. The effective speed of the car in this top case here is going to be the speed of the car plus the speed of the wind, since that's helping it along. And in the bottom case here, we're going to write that as uh, Vc minus Vw, since the speed of the wind is actually fighting back against the speed of the car. We can write these two expressions along with the, the distance and time values, and those will help us also find a formula that is in terms of one of these two methods above. So we know that a distance is equal to the speed multiplied by the time. So we can write the distance as equal to both the effective speed of the car in part 1 times the time in part 1, and it can also be equal to the effective speed of the car in part 2 multiplied by the time in part 2. And notice that we already have little formulas for the effective speeds of the car in parts 1 and 2, so we can use them to expand on both of these distance formulas, like so. And keep in mind that our ultimate goal here is to somehow combine these two equations in a way that gets rid of this vw variable. So first, let's divide the time variables by both equations so that we get the speed parts on their own. And now those two equations become uh, these two equations right here. And now, you might realize that since we have a vw in the top equation and negative vw in the bottom equation, then we can uh, use the classic algebraic technique of adding two equations to cancel out a variable. So we add these together, and we find uh, 2 vc, vc plus vc is 2 vc. The vw's cancel out. And then we have d over t1 plus d over t2. And we can solve for vc by dividing both sides by 2. And this right here becomes our formula for Vc. And notice that this is exactly the same as the formula for method 1. So method 1 is going to be our answer. That's going to be the method we want to use that will cancel out the wind speed. In part b, we're given uh, the ratio of the speed of the wind to the speed of the car as 0 0.0240. And we're asked to find the fractional difference in the speeds we'd get for using both methods. Uh, which can be roughly written as Vc, the speed of the car for the method we used, minus uh, Vc prime, which I'm defining as the speed we would get if we used method 2. And all of this over the actual speed of the car you'd measure. So because the ratio of the speed of the wind to the speed of the car is the only value we were given, we want to somehow find this fractional difference in terms of the ratio. 
So let's first start by rewriting vc prime on its own. And recall that vc prime is the speed of the car you'd calculate if we used method 2, which was d divided by uh, the sum of the times divided by 2. But we can bring the 2 out of the denominator and bring it into the top to simplify it slightly. Now we can tell from the ratio that this uh, d value here isn't going to be very useful to us, so let's cancel it out. And we can do that by rewriting the times in terms of their speeds for each part of the motion. Recalling that time is equal to a distance divided by the speed, we can write t1 as the distance divided by vc plus vw, and t2 as d divided by the formula we found for, for the speed in part 2 of the motion as well. Now we can see that all these d's will cancel out. Let's also clean up this denominator a bit, since all this uh, fraction addition is kind of messy. We can fix this by performing a least common denominator multiplication. So we'd multiply the numerator and the denominator of this first fraction on the left here by vc minus vw, and then multiply the second term, both the numerator and the denominator, by vc plus vw, and then add them together. And you should end up with something like this. Uh, so we can pretty easily see that these VWs will cancel out. And this VC plus VC can be written as 2 VC. And let's also take this large term at the very bottom here and bring it up into the numerator. And now we can see that these 2s will cancel out as well. And lastly, let's distribute out these top two terms right here. And now we've taken this whole term and written it in a pretty simplified way but there is still a problem of what we have. Like I said earlier, we are looking to take this and write it in a way so that we would be able to plug in this ratio that we were given up top of VW to VC. But even if we expand out this fraction here, like this, we'll still have the VW squared to the VC. That is not proportional because this top term is squared. So to fix this, we'll have to use a pretty rare algebraic technique. So as I'm sure you know, when we have something like this, where it's v squared divided by v, one of those v's will cancel out, and we'll end up with something simple like this, just vc. But in a case like this, it might be beneficial for us to actually do the reverse. Instead of canceling out two terms, instead let's add a term that would cancel out, but would give us a value that we know. So if we want to write a ratio of vw to vc, then it would be in our best interest to square vc as well, but we want to do that while still not actually changing the real value of the term. And we can do that by writing the term like this. See, I have squared the vc in the denominator, but I've also added a vc multiplying by the numerator. So the value of this term hasn't changed, because theoretically, this vc right here should still cancel out with the extra vc in the denominator, but this is extremely helpful, because writing it like this allows us to get VW to VC on its own. By writing it like this. Now we can much more easily plug in the ratio if we wanted to. So that's what VC prime is equal to. But of course, let's not forget that we're trying to find this fractional difference up above. So let's take this little rough formula that uh, we wrote out earlier and try to plug in what we've now found for vc prime into that. So plugging in our vc prime equation into our fractional difference expression here, we can see that it expands out into this larger thing right here. And it's pretty clear now that because this is a subtraction, these vcs will cancel out here. And then these negative signs will cancel out as well. So we're left with this. And then finally, the vcs will cancel out. So we can see that our final answer is going to be equal to the ratio we were originally given squared. So now let's plug that in. And to three significant figures, the ratio is equal to 5.76 times 10 to the negative 4. So that long, arduous process has clearly paid off.